While all the hype might be around the new MacBook Air, this hardware design is nothing without the silicon powering it, and an equal amount of focus should be placed on what is only Apple's second attempt at making custom silicon for the Mac. Of course, I am talking about the new M2 chip, and there is a lot to learn here about what Apple has said about the M2 chip at their worldwide developers conference so far. So for this video, I want to go over some of the secrets of the M2 chip, why it's a bigger deal than most people expected, some performance estimates that you can expect for when the first M2 Max starts shipping next month, and also what it can tell us about the future Max that haven't even been announced yet. Yeah, that's a lot to cover, but don't worry, you're smart, so I know you can handle all the info coming your way. All right, so what are the big enhancements to the M2 chip? Well, the M2 chip is built using enhanced second generation five nanometer technology and consists of 20 billion transistors. That's 25% more than the M1. In fact, the M2 chip is actually slightly larger than the existing M1 chip because of all of those transistors and because both the M1 and the M2 chip are using a similar five nanometer process, meaning that Apple hasn't actually shrunk in the chip size here at all, like they probably will with future iterations of the M3 chip, but they actually made the chip larger to fit these transistors. Now, the M2 chip is still based on a similar process and still has the same CPU core count as the M1. That's four high performance cores and four energy efficient cores. Basically, to make this simpler, the M1 chip was based on the A14 chip, that's the chip that was in the iPhone 12, and the M2 chip appears to be based on the A15 chip, that is the chip that is found in the iPhone 13. So it's not a revolution, but it does bring some performance improvements with it that you would expect for year over year gains. Just how much of an improvement? Well, that depends on what task you're using the M2 chip for. And not all areas are equal when it comes to performance improvements. So for example, Apple says that the new CPU features faster performance cores paired with a larger cache, while the energy efficient cores have been significantly enhanced for even greater performance gains. Together, they deliver 18% greater multi-threaded performance than the M1 chip. So M2 can rip through CPU intensive tasks using very little power. So what Apple is saying here is that the M2 chip will give us an 18% performance boost in multi-core performance over the M1 chip. So I usually use Geekbench benchmarks for initial benchmarks when I do these tests. So if you were to do an 18% improvement on the old M1 MacBook Air score, the M2 MacBook Air should be able to increase its multi-core performance to 8,754. That puts the M2 multi-core performance very close to the entry-level eight-core 14-inch MacBook Pro model, which gets a score of 9,511. Now, Apple doesn't give us figures for the single core performance increase of the M2, but if it's a similar jump from the A14 to the A15, it should net us around an 8% performance improvement on Geekbench, and that would give us a score of around the high 1800s, meaning the M2 equipped Macs will be faster at single core performance than even Apple's most expensive Apple Silicon Mac, the Mac Studio. Like I've told you before on previous M2 speculation videos, we are expecting a bigger development not in just C GPU performance this year, but in GPU performance, and it looks like that is where the bulk of improvements come in. That's because the core count of the M2 chip on the GPU side is actually increasing from eight max cores on the M1 to 10 cores on the M2. Apple says this will give us a 35% performance boost in GPU performance, which is very similar to the performance boost the GPU got with the iPhone 13 Pro. Now, Apple provides a lot of other different examples on its website on how this will translate performance-wise to some of your favorite applications. So for video editors, you can expect 1.4 times improvement in Final Cut Pro, while using image filters and effects will only see a 1.2 times improvement. Gaming will see a 1.3x improvement, and you can see similar improvements for a whole bunch of tests. However, one of these tests really stands out, and that is a whopping 3x faster improvement in video transcode performance. Well, the reason for that is one of the secrets behind the M2 chip, and that is the dedicated media engine. The M2 offloads a lot of the work to that dedicated engine so it isn't tying up CPU and GPU resources. And the M2 features a high bandwidth video decoding engine with support for 8K H.264 and HVEC video. These media engines are no joke, and it's one of the reasons I've seen such excellent video performance in products like Apple's pro-level MacBook Pros with Apple Silicon. These improved engines mean that the M2 chip 
even placed in a consumer level product like the MacBook Air should be able to handle multiple streams of not only 4K video, but 8K video as well. And that is just insane for a consumer level product. I mean, some of the desktop Intel Macs I used a few years ago wouldn't be able to even handle that. Apple literally lists the test here that has the MacBook Air handling four streams of 8K video and up to 20 streams of 4K video. That is pretty insane if you were to ask me. Now, I think one of the biggest upgrades to the M2 chip, and it seems like one of the least talked about, is the upgrade in memory bandwidth and the max memory. So the M2 chip is getting a 50% increase in overall memory bandwidth, bringing it to 100 gigabytes per second of unified memory bandwidth. That is the same now as the M1 Pro series of chips. That will make this laptop even more performative and able to handle larger tasks, especially coupled together with the increase of max memory, moving it now to a maximum of 24 gigabytes of unified memory. This is a big deal because one of the bigger hurdles I personally experienced when I was using the M1 Max full time was the maximum 16 gigabyte memory limitation. For most tasks, I was fine with it, but on some longer video projects, I just needed a little bit more memory to ensure a totally smooth experience. I feel pretty confident that with a maxed out M2 configuration, I could do all of the work that I currently use my M1 Max MacBook Pro for. That means that we are even further pushing the boundaries of these entry-level Macs and what they are capable of. And these computers are going to not only be great for everyday use, but for real professional workloads as well. Now, not to shower uh, too much praise on the M2 chip because there's still some weaknesses here. Uh, the primary one is perhaps IO bandwidth. For some reason, either architecturally or perhaps even some sort of artificial limitation that Apple is placing on these Macs with the M2 chip, well, it appears that these chips are still only capable of driving one external monitor. Now it can go up to all the way to a 6K display and that's great and it might not be a problem for everyone, but if you do work with a dual monitor setup and want a super thin and light form factor like this new M2 MacBook Air, well, unfortunately these Macs won't be able to natively provide multi-monitor connections. All right, what's next? Because Apple only showed off two of the Macs that are going to receive the M2 chips, the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. And I think we can learn a lot about Apple's future plans for the rest of the M2 Mac lineup by looking at these two products. So for something like the current 24 inch iMac, I expect that when the M2 chip is more readily in supply, that is all Apple will need to upgrade this desktop computer to make it have the same M2 chips as these new MacBooks. In fact, it might be one of the only upgrades we see for a new M2 iMac because Apple literally didn't change anything on the new 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro, except for the inclusion, of course, of that M2 chip. Perhaps even the same can be said for the Mac mini. All Apple would have to do with a new Mac mini is just replace the chip. Take that M1 chip out, put a new M2 chip into that design, and really, that would be the upgrade that most people care about for this small desktop form factor. And perhaps maybe that should be the upgrade we are hoping for, because it seems with every redesigned Mac, uh, we are getting a higher price increase. So the M2 MacBook Air with a new redesign increased its starting price by $200. And that's $200 more in price without even receiving some of the more costly components like the mini LED display that went into the 14 inch MacBook Pro. So perhaps we should be careful what we wish for with the next Mac mini, because even though I would like a new design uh, compared to the older Mac mini design, if Apple updates that design, there is a chance that they will also increase the price. And the Mac mini starting at $699 right now is just such a great value. Like. Imagine packing the M2 chip into that computer without any price increases and having the ability to spec it up to 24 gigabytes of unified memory. That would make that Mac the best overall Mac for performance per dollar, and it's not even close. As for other future Macs, well, it's easy to imagine we will get stronger M2 Pro, M2 Max, and M2 Ultra chips down the line, but at least for the immediate future, there's nothing really preventing Apple from updating their existing M1 Macs with the M2 chip. Again, I just think it's a supply issue, so there might be a chance that we might see these M2 Macs released before even Apple's fall event if Apple can fix their supply chain issues. As for now, we all still have a month to wait before we can get our hands on these first M2 Macs, although I suspect with all the information above, 
we are going to continue to be blown away by what Apple Silicon is capable of and Apple's entry-level Macs are only going to stand out more as the ones to get for this generation because of the M2 chip. All right, everyone, hopefully you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please leave me a like. If you wanna see more future updates and future reviews of the M2 Max, well, I would say get subscribed because that is definitely coming. And as always, hopefully I will see you in the next one and uh, peace or victory, whatever you prefer.